So let's do a recap on the essential concepts that you need to understand to get started in machine learning. I think a good place to start is with the four part recipe for any machine learning algorithm. So every machine learning algorithm really consists of those four things. That is the data, the model, the optimizer, and the criterion. So the data is of course, the features and the labels in a typical supervised data set where you have both of those things. You might have an unsupervised data set where you only have the features and the, really that depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. But the features represent all of the different data which you can give to your model and is gonna be used to try and predict the labels. And all of that is done by the second part, which is the model. The model is a mathematical function which takes in the features and outputs a prediction. That is as simple as it gets. People really like to overcomplicate that term and you hear that term model thrown about everywhere, but that's what it actually means. It's just a mathematical function, takes in the features, gives you a prediction. And those models can take really any kind of form. You've got a wide range of possible models to use from linear regression, logistic regression, neural networks, gradient boosting. There are loads of models that you can choose from. The third thing that every machine learning algorithm needs is a optimizer. That is some algorithm which is gonna decide how to update the model or how to get it to the point where it can make good predictions. Because a lot of the time, you start off with a model which is totally random. And of course, when it's random, it makes random predictions which are no good. So the optimizer is the strategy that you follow to try and improve the model. And most of the time, that strategy is to follow gradient-based optimization, which is where you evaluate some continuous loss function you look at how do I move in the direction which decreases that loss function, and then you update the parameters in that direction iteratively. You do that over and over again, taking small steps at a time until eventually you end up at a parameterization which has a very low point on that loss curve. And the loss curve, of course, is what generates the fourth part of the system, which is the criterion. So the criterion is your loss function, roughly. So there might be your mean squared error if you're doing a regression problem. The criterion is a measure of how bad is your model currently performing. And our aim is always to minimize that criterion, to minimize the loss function. And that's an indication that the model is doing well. So those four things help you optimize the parameters of the model, typically the weights and biases of a linear regression model or a neural network or something like that. But there are many other kind of models which might not have parameters like that as well. In fact, some models can be non-parametric, don't have any parameters at all. But there's a big class of other kind of parameters that we need to update too. And those are the hyperparameters. So hyperparameters are parameters which you don't want the model to be able to optimize directly or are pretty hard to tune. So ones that you don't want the model to optimize directly would be things like the learning rate. If the model can choose its own learning rate, then it's likely going to set it to a really big number so it can decrease the loss as quickly as possible. Or if you have a high parameter which controls the capacity of the model, then that's not something that you want to let the model choose. Remember that the capacity is a measure of the range of different functions which a model can fit. So if a model can choose how big of a range of functions it's possible to fit, then it's going to choose the biggest range possible so that it can fit all kind of crazy shapes, even if that would massively overfit the model. To give a more concrete example, if I had a polynomial model, which raises its features to the power of one, two, three, four, all the way up to n, then that n is a capacity controlling hyperparameter. The higher powers of x, the features, which I let the model make predictions based on, then the more wavy that function can be. And that's gonna mean that it can overfit really easily. So my point there is that we don't want the model to be able to control all of these hyperparameters because some of them, it's gonna do badly behaved things. The other group of hyperparameters are those which are hard to optimize because they need to be chosen in advance. So things like the optimizer which you choose to use or the learning rate for that optimizer. These things are hard to optimize because they've got to be chosen in advance. And when you're dealing with big models like deep neural networks, the training of each of those models is very expensive. So you don't want to do that for 10,000 different values of the learning rate because it's going to cost you a lot of time and a lot of compute. So the next essential concept is based on how we evaluate the model. Of course, we don't want to evaluate it based on the same days that we trained on, because that's just like looking at the answers. If you trained on exactly what you're going to be evaluated on, of course, you can get very good at it. But you want to have a separate set called the validation set, which is a small holdout set of the data, which the model hasn't been trained on. And that's the one that we should use to compare different hyperparameters so that we can make a choice about which model is best. And then we've got another split of the data, which is the test set. 
The point of the test set is that at the end of the day, you have to report to someone how good your model is. If we pick the best model based on the test score, well then we're using the answers to answer the question. So we never make any choices about the model based on the test set. That is only for reporting performance. We can choose between different models using the validation set, and we can train to get our parameters using the training set. So those are the three splits of data. We've got the training set, probably 70% of the data set. We've got the validation set, maybe 20% of the data set, and the test set, maybe 10% of the data set. And so we use each of those sets for different things. We use the test set to evaluate the final performance, never making any decisions about the model based on the test set. We use the validation set to see how well the model generalizes to unseen examples. And we use the training set to find the initial parameters. The difference between the performance on the validation set and the training set is called the generalization gap. And that gap is a good indicator of some of the characteristics and pitfalls that a model can have. So if your training error is much lower than your validation error, it probably means that you've overfit your model to the training data set. If your validation error and your training error are roughly the same, but still not good enough, then it probably means that your model doesn't have the capacity it needs to model your data. And if your training error is good enough and your validation error is also good enough, then you're in a good spot. But if your validation error is lower than your training error, then you're probably doing something wrong. Or you just have a very small data set and they're not representative of each other. So really what we wanna do with the training loss and the validation loss is try and reduce that generalization gap without affecting the training loss. And doing that is called regularization. So regularization is anything that reduces the generalization error whilst not really affecting the training error. And there are loads of ways that you can use regularization. And if you're comfortable with all those things, then you've got a decent grasp on what you need to get started in machine learning.